single parents have some unique financial challenges these days. There are issues that most dual parent families don't have to consider. And joining us today is Samantha Freilich. She is the vice president at Bernard R. Wolf and Associates, and she's got some helpful financial planning advice for all the singles out there. Good to see you, Samantha. Thank you for having me. So, um, a lot of single parents have to deal with issues that, as I said, that people that have two people in the family, they that both of them bread winning bread earners, they, they don't have to consider right. being the single parent because when you're a single parent, you don't have that safety net. No. You've got the one income, that's all you have to fall back on. Right. So you really have to, you know, be wise about your, mo your money and your finances. Absolutely. So budgeting is really important whether you're a single parent or a dual parent family, but for single parents it's even more challenging because they only have one income obviously mm -hmm. and they still have all of those expenses. So it's really important for a single parent to get a handle on that. Yeah, and this is the question though. People say, how do I start? Where do I, how do I begin with the budgeting You process? know what? It's a really simple process, honestly. You take all of your expenses for a monthly basis, you add that all up, and hopefully at the end you have an excess as far as your expenses are not exceeding your income, and then you have a certain portion where you actually save. Most people don't realize when you do a budget, your expenses should actually meet your income because one of your expenses should be a savings pot, uh -huh. right? So that should be equal, actually. Part of the problem, I guess, for people when they do try to make a budget is that some of the expenses change from month to month. So you have to kind of get a yearly and, the, uh, and then average it, right? Right, yeah, exactly. Just take all of your expenses. Maybe a year is the easiest mm -hmm. way to do it. And what's great is a lot of banks and credit card companies now offer a way that they generalize those expenses and they'll categorize them for you and you can just divide it by 12. For instance, you know, you may only need two oil changes a year. So you add that expense in for your annual expenses divided by 12. Okay, good. Maybe look for sales too along the way. Absolutely. <laughs> Always look for out. sales. Absolutely. Okay, I guess the, the, after you make that budget, the next thing is you got to learn to stay within your means. I mean, Absolutely. So you can't exceed that budget. That's all you have to work with. Right. And I think as a single parent, it's really important to get the children involved in that conversation. I think I used to ask my mom why probably every day of my life when I was a kid. And I grew up in a single parent family uh -huh. home, so I understand that challenge. And I think if you get your children involved in that process and they understand the difference between needs and wants, that can, that can really save a single parent a lot of stress when a single parent has enough stress already, let alone trying to explain to a kid why they can't have the you know, seven jeans they want mm -hmm. in eighth grade that all the other kids are wearing. Um, so I think it's really important to get your kids involved. I know, you know my mom used to offer us coupon incentive programs where we knew we had a grocery list that week, but if we could find coupons in any of the local papers, she would actually give us that as a bonus for our allowance that week if we found the coupon. So I think it's, it's great to get kids motivated. That uh, is a great things. idea. Yeah. I love it that. Is. Absolutely. Yeah, terrific. And you know, for the kids that are always yamming for anything they see, like in the grocery store right. aisle, when, right. you're, when you're going through and there's bubble gum right there, whatever, I mean, the parent can say, well, when they've already addressed the budget issue with the child, do you want this bubble gum now or, or do you need Do you it? want to go to the beach this summer or, you know, something exactly. that, do you want that toy that you've been wanting? No, exactly. Um, so they the kind age, of see in no, the big picture absolutely. That all of these little things add up. And at a very young age, they understand dollars and cents. Like at five, they can typically understand the difference between a nickel and a dime and a mm -hmm. quarter. And at nine, they should be able to understand actually diversifying against needs and wants and savings and allowance and maybe saving for a long-term expense versus a, you know, immediate want that they have, the candy at the grocery store. Aisle. Yep. Immediate gratification. Exactly. All right, you mentioned savings, and you said that is part of the budget process. Where do we, how, how do we start with the savings? How much should we be putting into savings? Well, you know, I think the most common question I get from single parents, or really any parent in general, is what should I be saving for first? Should it be retirement? Should it be the kid's college? And I can't tell you as a financial advisor how many times parents will come in to me, and they have a college savings account for their kids. But the first thing I ask is, well, what's your risk management plan? Have you planned for if, God forbid, something happened to you? When you're in a single parent um, situation, you don't have anybody else to fall back on. Should, God forbid, you know, the unexpected happen where you're injured for a while, you know, or you're out of work for a while, it's really important for a single parent to have a savings to deal with any kind of an emergency that might pop up, whether it's medical or just a layoff in general. So and how many months of income should be in that savings? Um, a basic rule of thumb is at least six to nine months. And depending on the type of industry you're in, it may need to be up to a year if you're in, in, a, in an industry that isn't as consistent 
as another one, but at least six to nine months. And that's liquid money, money you can get yes. your hands on this today, not absolutely. something that's tied up in stocks. Correct. Or this isn't funds. money you're taking mutual fund risk or you know stock market or risk your four hundred one k. No, absolutely mm -hmm. not. This is liquid money, not even really a CD. They're not paying much these days anyway. But this is basically almost a money market or a cash situation. So you would recommend putting it in a, a savings account or a money market? Um, if you can get a money market rate, that's great. I would say a, a money market might be a little bit better than a savings. But most regional banks actually have better competitive rates mm -hmm. compared to the national banks. So you might want to check some of your local banks. For and some then you rate. talked about being laid up for a while, maybe with an injury. What about insurance? Oh, insurance is huge. I think it's a topic a lot of people don't want to think about. They always think, I'll plan for that later. But it's a really important thing to plan for if you're a single parent. Um, and, and, you know, life insurance in general can be very expensive, but what a lot of single parents don't realize is term life is actually really inexpensive. If you're a 30-year-old woman, it can be as low as $550 for a million-dollar term 20-year life insurance policy. That, that will cover your children until they reach the age of college and provide, obviously, you know, some income for whoever might be guarding them, you know, if something, God forbid, should happen to you. So you need that insurance. And Absolutely. then I guess the other thing is the estate planning. I mean, if you were to pass away, you'd need at least a will, right? Very okay. much so. So, you know, who you choose to take care of your children might be very different than who the state chooses. And it's really imperative for a single parent to have that in a will. And a will is not an expensive thing. You can get um, QuickBooks, mm -hmm. Willmaker Plus, it's 50 bucks. Okay, you can make your own will. You have two witnesses sign it. A lot of states require a notary, but if you just get that in writing as to who you want to take care of your children, that's huge. Huge, absolutely. Lots of great ideas there. Samantha Freilich, thanks so much for coming in to talk oh, to us about Oh, thanks so much for having me. Very important it. issue, singles and money. Absolutely. All right, coming up a little bit later.